This week on Jerusalem Bateline, the war in Ukraine enters its second month. See how one Christian ministry chose to stay and serve on the front lines. Plus, Israel sets up the first civilian hospital inside Ukraine to help the war refugees and others. Also, how to pray for the situation, as many warn we may be on the verge of World War III. And one of Ukraine's top runners comes to take part in the Jerusalem Marathon. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. When war came to Ukraine, a small band of Christian missionaries chose to stay and serve rather than flee to safety. They become a lifeline for thousands of people in need of food, encouragement, and simple human companionship. George Thomas brings us their story from Kyiv. When war started and Russian bombs began falling on Kyiv, we had our bags packed because it's just like you're in a rush and there's a new situation. All of a sudden in the morning you wake up and you hear the sound of bombs. So you're like in a rush and you're like, whoa, like what is happening? Marie and Jaffine had to make a decision whether to leave the capital. It was not an easy decision, but until we prayed. But once we prayed, it was a very easy decision. Jaffin is from India. His wife, Marie, is German. Both missionaries to Ukraine with the group Youth with a Mission. Growing up in India and also doing ministry in India, this was not my first time being in a dangerous situation. In fact, this is the third time. They decided to stay because of a commitment to serve the people here, despite the very real danger to their lives. We also like committed to marriage, like staying in good and in bad times. We are not only here trying to make an impact when times are favorable, but especially when things go really bad um, and when people are leaving, this is the time when we actually need to stay. This is the heart of Kyiv. It's popularly known as Maidan. And today, it is a fortress, concrete slabs, sandbags, and these metal structures are aimed at stopping Russian tanks. Today, half the city has already evacuated. And for folks at YWAM Kyiv, it's all about ministering to those who are still in the city. 30 minutes south of Maidan. Wow. I'm from Germany. Oh, from Germany. Wow. Yeah. Jaffin and Marie sprung into action, turning the sprawling YWAM campus into a humanitarian aid hub. And they're just dropping all of these things here. So our job is to um, sort all these things out. So it looks chaotic. Natalia Turbina and her two sons work in the kitchen, making meals for the folks in the neighborhood. It depends on the day. Sometimes there are days when we cook for a thousand people, sometimes 500 or 600. Wow, look at you peel. You are like a peeling machine. Wow, look at how fast she's peeling those <laughs> potatoes. Wow. The only thought that gave me peace was to go back to Ukraine. So that's why I'm here. Okay, and while I talk, I try to keep my eye yeah. on the 19A. Katarina, also a um, YWAM missionary I, here, is from Finland. Careful. I'm not saying that God was the one who forced me to go to the war zone, or that it was somehow like I couldn't have, I didn't have a choice. I had a choice. That was my choice. My choice was to come here, and God opened the door. Uh huh. Visit just doma. She evacuated just before war started, but returned days later. Wait, we're walking up 12. Flights of stairs? Yeah. Got it. Now Katerina hits the streets of Kyiv delivering food and other aid supplies to those unable to leave their apartments. Thank you for how much you love her. Each visit ending with time of prayer. That's okay, I don't know Ukrainian either. While Katerina makes her daily deliveries, David Selsky, who normally handles maintenance on the YWAM campus, is making dangerous missions to evacuate people trapped behind Russian lines. Every time when I go to these areas, I prepare myself that I might not get out of there. I pray every time. I'm not counting, but I've evacuated more than 100 people. I just work and work as long as I can. And as long as God allows me to help. In another part of campus, Yulia Kentz, who has been with YWAM for five years, is on the phone taking orders from a nearby neonatal hospital. 
Almost every other day, YOM campuses in Germany and other European countries are shipping medical supplies to Kyiv for distribution. Ken's daily prayer is that God will sow confusion among Russian forces, trying to encircle her capital. There is this very good saying that if uh, Russia will put down their weapons, there are going to be no war. But if Ukraine will put down their weapons, there are going to be no Ukraine. And this is so true. When they're not handling day-to-day -day logistics or sorting through all the supplies coming in from around the world, Jafin and Marie visit elderly homes, bringing food and lots of warm hugs. We are so bored, but the time flies when you are here. It is so tender. It is something for the soul. It is so pleasant. It is wonderful. For Jafin, Marie and others at YWAM, ministering in Ukraine's war zone is ultimately about fulfilling a commitment to serve. I think it's not so much about handing out food packages now or like cooking meals or like distributing some, some humanitarian aid. That is not the main thing that God has been preparing me for because everybody can do that. But the hard thing to do is to do it while you hear the shelling of bombs and while you see continuously on the news how in your city, not far away from you, um, a building is burning and people are dying. But I just do it because of love for the country and because of commitment to saying I'm not stepping away. And then if I feed two people or if I help to feed 1,000 people a day, maybe in my heart it doesn't make a difference because my commitment to God is just the same. George Thomas, CBN News, Kyiv, Ukraine. Well, that's an inspiring story. On the diplomatic front, while the U.S. appears on the verge of completing the Iranian nuclear deal in Vienna, Israel is warning how one part might have dangerous implications on the entire Middle East. After months of talks, the U.S. pursuit of this agreement could mean removing Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard from the list of foreign terrorist organizations. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett calls the potential concession dangerous because it involves the world's deadliest terror organization. The terrorist group, the IRGC, is trying to murder Israelis and certain Americans around the globe. Unfortunately, we're seeing a determination to sign a nuclear deal at almost any cost, including saying that the biggest terrorist group in the world is not a terrorist organization. This is too steep a price. They have become the operational terrorist arm of the Iranian government, which employs terrorism as a tool of statehood. And that's why we actually designated the IRGC as a foreign terrorist organization. Former Deputy National Security Advisor for the Middle East, Victoria Coates, sees the IRGC as a menace to the region. As part of the Trump administration, she helped designate the group as a foreign terrorist organization, or FTO. What was powerful about the FTO for the IRGC, which was groundbreaking, it was historic, we hadn't done that to a, a military before, is it immediately stopped a lot of the IRGC's commercial activities, which were one of the economic lifelines to the regime in Tehran. Coates says the Revolutionary Guard resembles a cancer, spreading terror through the region and using proxies like Hezbollah, Hamas and the Houthis, plus international assassination threats. It's also behind Iran's ballistic missile program and its drone arsenal. Any U.S. agreement to remove the IRGC from the terrorist list would supposedly require a promise not to spread terror in the region. Coates points out after the Biden administration lifted the designation off the Houthis in Yemen, they simply increased terror activities. So interestingly, as Israel has gotten closer to both Saudi and UAE, you know, they've been talking about this and what happened when the Houthi came off the list and how terrible it's going to be if the IRGC comes off the list. They'll get a lot of money. They'll have freedom of movement again. And we've seen almost for the first time in my memory, a united message out of Abu Dhabi, Riyadh and Jerusalem that this is unacceptable. And these are three of the United States' most powerful allies in the region. We should listen to them. And if the Biden administration does not listen, many believe allies like the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Israel will find themselves targets of one of the world's most dangerous terror organizations. Up next, Israel sets up a field hospital in Ukraine 
to help war refugees and others. Франківську не дуже страшно, бо там лише підірвали аеропорт. Homes destroyed. All days they bombs uh, our town all days. Families torn apart. Да, остался муж, остались мої родители. Women and children fleeing for their lives. It, it was very... Will you help? You can be a part of distributing hygiene kits, bottled water, food, and more to the Ukrainian refugees. The needs are enormous, but you can be a part of the solution. Give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. Today, you can make a difference. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to ob.org slash crisis. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Centuries before his birth, ancient prophets foretold his coming. The scriptures would describe how he would fulfill prophecy. His life changed history. His death changed eternity. CBN Israel presents the evidence from scripture that proclaims Jesus as the Messiah. Get it today to build your faith and share his message. Call now or log on for your copy of The Messiah, Prophecy Fulfilled. One of Israel's international missions is to lead the way in providing whatever help is needed when international disaster strikes. The war in Ukraine is no different. And CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl shows us an Israeli field hospital, which is also teaching a lesson in forgiveness. Ukrainian and Israeli officials dedicated the Mostiska Field Hospital located in western Ukraine between Lviv and the Polish border. The State of Israel mission to Ukraine today stands our unique moment in history. It effectively connects between our past Jewish life here that goes back a thousand years and the modern Jewish state. Hospital director Dr. Yoel Har Evan says while Israel often sponsors medical missions to disaster areas, this is the first civilian field hospital. Our mission is to make sure that Ukrainian people know they are not alone in this chaos. The six and a half million dollar project is operated by Sheba Medical Center and Schneider Children's Medical Center. In the name of the hospital is a shining star, Kochav Meir, named after Golda Meir who was born in Kiev and then later on became the Prime Minister of the State of Israel. We are certain that this shining star will lead the path in this difficult times for Ukraine. Ukrainians started coming as soon as the doors opened. I came here with my daughter. She is two and eight years old and she has problems on her skin. I have very high trust in the Israel medicine. So I decided to come and check up my, my daughter here. In providing treatment for refugees and locals, the hospital includes an emergency room, delivery room, and departments for men, women, and children. There are also imaging and laboratory capabilities with remote technology connected to Sheba Medical Center. We're here to just give full support and partnership with the local hospital. Uh, we're like an extension uh, of their hospital a unit in the field. We're working closely with their doctors and their system. Israel sent 10 tons of medicine plus beds, equipment and more than 60 workers. Many have Ukrainian born parents or other relatives forced to flee or who were captured during the Holocaust. 80 years ago, my mother, Victoria Zamoyre, then a 15-year-old girl, after all her family was murdered in Belzitz, fled her home not far from here on her way to freedom. Today, I, Elchanan Baron, stand here representing the State of Israel as part of a field hospital, lending a helping hand to anyone in need 
friend or foe because medicine has no boundaries. By doing so, we are providing hope without boundaries within a turbulent sea of tragedies in the immortal words of the legendary Rabbi Akiva, love thy neighbor as thyself. The opening ceremony included raising both the Israeli and Ukrainian flags, singing of the national anthems, and a hope that war would soon be over. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Coming up, how can people pray for the war in Ukraine and keep World War III from breaking out. Names from the Old Testament are being unearthed all over the city of Jerusalem. This was amazing. Come as close as you can get to personalities that are known from the Bible. Astonishing discoveries made today. A jaw-dropping moment of Bible archaeology. This is much more than a thrill. This is actual history that took place here on the site where we sit right now. Confirm the kings and prophets of the Bible left real evidence of their lives. Right time, the right place, with the right people. And one of the most significant finds in recent history. Exactly as the Bible tells us happened, in the days of King Hezekiah. Written in stone, kings and prophets. We have the Bible and we have archaeologists. Telling our story, it's matching. The Old Testament is a reliable history book. Get your copy today for a gift of any dollar amount. Call now or go to cbn.com slash written in stone. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years and to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us regent. From Superbook. Well, Judas? That sounded to my ear as two mites. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. Isn't it all right to just give whatever you want to give? Give, and it will be given to you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook The Widow's Might, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. A number of people have been warning the war in Ukraine could spread out and become World War III. Rick Ridings is the founder of Sukkot Hallel, a 24-7 prayer ministry here in Jerusalem. I talked with Ridings about how people can pray about the war in Ukraine and avoid a world war. Rick Ridings with uh, Sukkot Hillel, great to be with you. Uh, the world right now is in turmoil. There's a war in Ukraine between Ukraine and Russia, possible war between China and Taiwan, and economic upheaval. How important is it to Christians around the world to be praying for what's going on in the earth? I think it may be the most significant time to be praying earnestly since World War II. And uh, in the scriptures, it's very clear that our prayers are not just some religious exercise. In fact, Jesus was very clear, don't just do a lot of vain repetition, but there's a place where we can come into relationship with him to see what he wants to do in a, in a situation. And then uh, I call that praying from heaven down instead of from earth up. We begin to see what he wants to do and he gives us things that we proclaim upon the earth. And uh, there are times in history where there were very, very clear answers to prayer that turned the tide, for example, in World War II. Yeah, with Reese Howells. Uh, he was a famous intercessor. You say in, in an article you wrote last year about having the Reese Howells anointing or, or mandate. Yeah, the mandate that he had was not just to pray after the news happens and, and kind of try to mop up what has happened, but to actually in prayer and worship to believe that you can get to a place where God can show you creative things he wants to do upon the earth to change the situation. Similar to what Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So uh, he, he believed that God could show you things and he did. Uh, in World War II, the, according to the news, it was all over. Hitler basically won. It was, there wasn't much that could be done to change the situation. But Reese Howells and his Bible college students 
uh, believed the Lord showed them to pray that Hitler would make a stupid military decision and go into Russia right before winter. Mm -hmm. He did that, thinking I'll have this over in a few days and, and uh, that, that'll be it for the, the major nations. But instead he got stuck in the snow mm -hmm. that came early in Russia. And that was the turning of the tide in World War II. And after that, the Lord showed them step to step how to pray, things that then they would read about in the headlines and the news later. So how are people around the world praying right now? Are they in unison about this and how to intercept World War III? Well, we're hearing from many, many people who are hearing the same things we're hearing, to pray uh, restraining uh, that there would be uh, uh, a working of God in leaders uh, and, and, and changing leaders if needed and shifting leaders out, just like Pharaoh. God kept dealing with him, mm -hmm. and finally God just moved him out of power so that God's purposes could be happen, which was setting the, the Jewish people free from slavery, which we will celebrate in Pesach mm -hmm. soon. So I believe we can pray that leaders who have been deceived uh, and are making war will either come into an understanding that what they're doing is so wrong and change, which is what repentance means, or that God will just somehow remove them from power. So we're praying that right now for, for Putin. Uh, God's merciful, and I believe God will give him opportunities to repent, but we're praying if he doesn't repent, that somehow he would be removed from power and not can, uh, continue this slaughter uh, of people in Ukraine, and then encourage the same thing to happen in other places. They would encourage then China to invade Taiwan or Iran to come against Israel or all these different hot spots. So we believe as we pray for these leaders, God can deal with them like he did with Pharaoh. And we can actually see a turnaround mm -hmm. and an interception to stop World War III. Why? So that there could be this huge, great world harvest that seems to be beginning. And if you'd like to see the entire interview with Rick Ridings, you can log on to CBNNews.com. Up next, one of Ukraine's top runners joins the Jerusalem Marathon. Thank you for watching Jerusalem Dayline. We're committed to providing you with unbiased reporting from the Holy Land. Through weekly broadcasts, podcasts, and online media, our vision is to reach millions around the globe with the true story of what's happening in Israel and the Middle East, all from a biblical and prophetic perspective. This is a big vision and is only made possible by the generous support of people like you. Call us toll free at 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Jerusalem Dateline and make a donation that will help spread the light of truth about Israel throughout the world. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. Introducing a brand new way to start your morning. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Discover how God is moving around the world and here at home. Plus, get exclusive stories and daily scripture encouragement just for you. Stay informed. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. 
On an unseasonably cold and rainy morning, the Jerusalem Winners Marathon kicked off its 11th annual run through the modern and ancient city. And as CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl tells us, some runners ran for Ukraine. Draped in Israeli and Ukrainian flags, Valentina Kiliarska was the first woman to cross the finish line in the full marathon. It's a big day for me. I have a big day. Valentina is a champion marathon runner from Ukraine. Just last month, she fled to Poland with her daughter while her husband stayed behind to fight the Russians. Now she's in Jerusalem with all eyes on her. One of my goals is show all my country that we can uh, we, we fight always. We, uh, we can do it and we, uh, we win. About 25,000 runners participated in this year's Jerusalem Winter Marathon, Half Marathon and four other races. At a press conference ahead of the event, Jerusalem Mayor Moshe Leon welcomed Valentina. Sport unites people. Sport can help build peace. So where better to run a marathon than the city of peace, the city of Jerusalem? Valentina isn't the only one from Ukraine running in the marathon. A group of about 40 new immigrants and refugees who arrived in Israel recently is also running to show solidarity with Ukraine. This is the first international event since Israel opened its borders to everyone after two years of COVID-19 closures and lockdowns. At least 1,100 runners came from around the world to participate. Where else in the world can you run through 3,000 years of history, past so many holy sites, the Tower of David, the old city? Leon said the running wouldn't be easy. As a Christian, Valentina said it's very special for her to run in Jerusalem. I feel this place like it's uh, my home. And I feel uh, power from here. It's power which uh, push me. Valentina's prayer, and that of many others, is for peace in Ukraine. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, Valentina is one more story from the war in Ukraine, like YWAM volunteers in Kyiv, the Israeli health workers, and how you too can pray for the situation. If you'd like, please join me in prayer right now about the war in Ukraine. Father, we want to pray right now for protection for those people that are in harm's way, that you would bring them relief and food and health care. And Father, we also pray that you would restrain evil and wickedness and that you would prevent the world from coming into World War III and that you would bring a godly resolution to this situation. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Please continue to pray for what's happening in Ukraine. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blasts so you can continue to receive all of our exciting CBN content. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.